Hi, welcome back. So in this video I'm going to turn uh, myself a wooden mallet. Uh, this is all sage orange, so it should have nice heft to it. Um, it's not any particular big blank, uh, so this one is around uh, 3 by 3 roughly uh, square, although it's not quite square, but close to that and uh, this side is a little bit thinner so on this side I'll make a handle and uh, as you can see I don't bother much at le uh, in this case at least um, with squaring up the ends so I'll do that on the lathe so this will be a nice quick little project and uh, I'm in a need for a new one so um, yeah off we go So this is the continental spindle gouge, this is 3 quarters of an inch, 20 mil wide. Um, this is what they used to use primarily for um, spindle work and, uh, and even bowls. And uh, I might even do a video where I just turn a bowl using this one. And uh, not to be uh, confused, this is not spindle roughing gouge. Although I'm roughing the spindle right now, this is not spindle roughing gouge. This is much shallower a U shape, you can see probably. Um, which is quite important versus the spindle roughing gouge who has the sides up parallel, let's say. So that can be now flipped around and I'll finish the, the shaping here, the rough cutting and this is quite loose. So you can dig this out and you can feel when that's spinning when you remove that and this will be on the handle part which is good okay so i put this end in the chuck uh, where the tenon is and uh, this is now the head part and uh, i'll just chew everything up again using the spindle gouge Okay, so I brought you overhead so you can see better what's going on and uh, like I said this has a little twist with the grain so not ideal although on this side looks straight but here it's all over the place so not the best choice but this is quite dense and hard timber so wouldn't matter too much so um, at any good mallet you want to slight taper here so a little bit smaller diameter here than at, at the top so I'll do that with the skew that sounds terrible yeah that's pulling out quite a bit of grain here so so that's the planing cut and it doesn't produce great cut on this particular blank so what i'll try to do is low peel so this will be high peel you go over the rotation like this when you want to remove a lot of wood 
but low peel is somewhere in between the scraper like this and the high peel like this so somewhere in the middle that feels much much smoother if you notice the skew has one bevel longer and that's um, a mistake uh, you can see probably the I tried to show under the light the secondary bevel heel here I was sure I wasn't checking I was in a rush to sharpen this now and um, I didn't check the platform, I was sure it was set correctly, but it wasn't, so I start to grind, but at the wrong angle, so, but I'll remove that eventually, it doesn't concern me much, so. So nice light touch. that will be okay yeah that's pretty much all of it gone which is great news um, now I want to start shaping the top here and I'll do that with a spindle gouge just drop the rest a little bit Here for the handle, I'm testing with my left hand, so obviously this is way too big, so, but in terms of design, I would like maybe a taper here, and um, I might even do a taper here as well, instead of a curve. Okay, so I have this taper done here, so... Make it nice and clean. And in the middle of the handle I like a little bulbous area and here we'll make a lift up. Removing the bulk of the wood here. Let's make a nice shoulder decoration here nice curve Ok, 
Okay, so that feels okay. The plane in front. And it's always nice to make some sort of a detail here. And this one I'll burn. Probably. Or not. Not sure. We'll see. Um, so I can sand this and we'll flip it around one more time. So I sanded this with 180 grit, it doesn't have to be smoother than this um, because you don't want to get too slippery with it, so that, that will be okay. Now I'll just um, rearrange this, put back the spur drive and then we'll um, finish it off. Round and now I can work on, the, on this, finishing this part here. So like I said, I want slight rise here, doesn't have to be much. Again, a little dimple like this. Looks okay, feels okay. So just a little hump here, which I'll try to, to cut with the skew. To blend these curves and that looks quite nice. And now just to finish here, and maybe a little smaller diameter and this is not ideal so something like this and this is a little bit too sharp to make a little bead like so we'll sand that a little bit cleaner what I'm going to do actually is just make a dome from this line here where I meant to burn the line So this part here actually went a little bit out of round uh, in between flipping over. So what I'll do is again low peel. three dots which are then I can burn ok 
Okay, I'll sand this one more time and uh, I'll show you uh, how it looks after I finish the top here. I'll just use the chisel and uh, carve away here the top and oil this and you'll see the final result. Okay, so here is the end result. So I just put the clamp hems um, saddle bolt finish on and uh, really nice, nice stuff. I'm falling in love with Osage Orange. Although it's uh, quite dusty, messy, everything is radioactive yellow. Um, it turns great and it just has a beautiful chatoyance and uh, the, the sort of a 3D grain depth. So uh, now uh, you always want to have the bottom uh, or, or actually the top of your mallet. Um, so it sits on the upside down and although this is curved there is a slight flat here so if i just put it in a curve like this it will stay even if i put it like so uh, the heft and the, he the the weight on the top end just doesn't prevent it to tip over so just grab it and continue on with your work and this is on the smaller side uh, smaller side um more of a carving uh, hammer so you can grip it uh, uh, by the head and use it for a uh, much finer stuff or you can grip it here and whack it so